Hello friends how often do you see a patient with facial nerve palsy what are the findings you see on examination so let us find out facial nerve is examined under four broad headings motor function examination sensory function examination reflexes and secretory functions in motor functions facial nerve supplies muscles involved in facial expressions sensory functions are related to taste perception Most commonly corneal reflex is being tested and secretory functions are related to lacrimal and salivary glands. Let's begin with motor examination. First of all, observe the nasolabial folds for depth and symmetry. Look for forehead wrinkling and observe the movements during spontaneous facial expressions like smiling or frowning. On inspection, can you observe the flattening of the nasolabial folds on the right side as compared to left? Here is another patient but with the flattening of the left nasolabial fold. Now we ask the patient to show his teeth or to smile. We can see that the left eye is open and angle of mouth deviates to right side. This denotes that the patient has left sided palsy while right side is normal. In the other patient the angle of mouth deviates to the left side and right nasolabial fold is flattened. On asking the patient to puff out the cheeks you are testing orbicularis oris muscle and you can observe hollowness of the left cheek due to muscle weakness of the left side if the orbicularis oris muscle is impaired the examiner may be able to force air out of the puffed cheek on the paralyzed side when asked to raise his eyebrows we observe transverse creases on the forehead of the patient this tests the frontalis muscle which has bilateral innervation and hence It is spared in UMN type of unilateral facial palsy as opposed to the LMN palsy. Orbicularis oculi muscle is tested by asking the patient to close his eyes while the examiner tries to open the eyes. If the examiner can force the eye open with a small finger, then the orbicularis oculi muscle is definitely weak. The reflexes mediated by the facial nerve are the corneal reflex and below mentioned frontal release signs. So, how do we elicit corneal reflex? Lightly touch the cornea with a wisp of cotton. Stimuli should be brought in from the side of the patient without obstructing the visual field. The stimulus must be delivered to the cornea and not to the sclera or the eyelashes. The response is blinking of the ipsilateral and contralateral eyes through direct and consensual reflexes respectively. The afferent is the fifth nerve and efferent is seventh cranial nerve. With a unilateral seventh nerve lesion, the direct response may be impaired. but the consensual reflex should be normal facial nerve carries taste sensation from anterior to third of the tongue impaired taste sensation helps to localize the lesion proximal to the junction of the cauda tympani because a lesion at or distal to the stylomastoid foramen does not affect the taste sensation the substance to be tested is applied to the dorsal surface of the tongue at the junction of the anterior and middle one third The secretory functions of the seventh cranial nerve are usually evaluated by the history and observation. History of decreased tear production can be quantitated by Schirmer's test and abnormalities of salivation are usually suggested by history of dryness of mouth or difficulty in swallowing of the solids. 